This is the marker I used for three years, or a marker like it, in Union Square every September from 2002 to 2004. Every anniversary, people would gather there to sing and to talk and to lay flowers and lots of other things. There would always be paper stretched out and taped to the pavement. There was chalk and markers to write whatever you wanted to write. Uh, I People usually wrote memorials to loved ones there, which I would never have done because I didn't want the names of dead people I know on shitty paper taped to the street. But I did write. I remember the first time being shy about it, not knowing what to say, and my ex-girlfriend, two ex-girlfriends removed, squeezing my hand to say it was okay. And not being able to put it any other way, I took the marker and wrote, I am still here. Which was, I guess, all I knew to say. It was something I was saying to the earth or to the city or to God, maybe both as an olive branch and an act of defiance, a smoke signal and a middle finger. Fuck you, planet. (laughs) I'm going to keep living anyway, as useless as that seems. Fuck you, planet. I won't die if you won't. Fuck you, planet. I goddamn love you so much, so come here even if you don't care about me, I am still here. Three years I came to the park in September. I came and I wrote on that paper stretched out on the street, a ritual outliving my time with my ex-girlfriend twice removed as we grew apart and the city swallowed her, which it does easier than other cities. We worked a handful of blocks apart and never saw each other as soon as we didn't want to. The fourth year, on my own, I went to the park again. I ran there as if I was late, like I'd missed the service. And when I got there, I thought I had, because there were no songs, no paper, no markers. It was, it was just another day in New York City, the city that swallows everything, especially loss. That year was 2005, the fourth anniversary. And while I know it isn't true, there was this moment standing there in Union Square Park where I felt like I was the only one who knew. I felt like I was the only one still tied to what had happened. And maybe that was stupid. Maybe I was just letting the past and tragedy define me because I was young and lost and I couldn't think of anything better to define myself. But it was a fourth anniversary, and that's one that no one marks. A year later was the fifth, and that's an anniversary everyone remembers. It was on television again, and the names scrolled again, and the park was full. But I couldn't tell you if I stopped there or if I wrote on paper on the street. I I know that I thought about it. I thought, I am still here. But it meant something different. It wasn't a declaration for someone else to read and connect to. It wasn't something I needed to share. Now it meant I had some kind of secret pact with the world, with words that felt stronger for not being spoken. I am still here, world, and watching. My girlfriend, one ex-girlfriend removed, had rituals with the world, too. This is her tarot deck. She read tarot, and she had prophetic dreams, and once, I am serious, once read the fortune of the entire Manhattan Financial District (laughs) while sitting at the base of the Joie de Vivre, which, despite its name, is probably the most joyless sculpture in the most joyless part of the city. My ex and I had rituals, too. We had fighting rituals and fucking rituals, and Batman Begins must be watched a minimum of once a week rituals. And no matter what we do to each other, we are soulmates rituals. Even if we can't stand each other, even if we don't understand each other, even if we make each other so goddamn miserable, the universe had decided we belong together rituals, doomed to ride out the end of the world. She believed this. And she told me, and I believed it too. When our fights were the most brutal, we used the words 
to bring each other back down to earth. Hey, I'm still here, and you're still here. We're still sitting here together in this room. We're going to figure this out here, still. And sometimes she used the words, and sometimes I did, until neither of us could, and still here became this curse, first on us, and then on living in the city, and then on being ourselves. And I moved across the country, and she moved across the world, and still here became something else again. Still here meant, let's try and talk, because I'm still here, and you're still here, so what the fuck? It meant... Hey, I can't hear you. I I'm moving to another room. I'm getting four bars. Are you? I'm still here. Are you? And it became harder to still be here, not because it began to mean less, because it seemed like maybe it never meant anything, or worse, it had meant something that we'd lost or left behind us, not here, but there. And then I began to feel what here was. This is the couch that I slept on for the first six months I lived in San Diego. And here was a new city that for a time was my only friend. I moved here in 2010 and fell in love. After the grime and cold of New York, it felt like paradise or, or heaven. It seemed like a good place to ride out the end of the world. So I stayed here and got comfortable and met someone new who loved being here with me, but not being here itself. When you finish school, will you still want to stay here? Are you going to make me stay here? In 10 years, will we still be here? Do you think we'll die here? Because here was not the same place for me as it was for her. We were different versions of ourselves in this place, a version of me I'd found and liked more, and a version of her she'd fallen into and liked less. As soon as she arrived, she was ready to go. And by the time she knew that, she had already gone. And now I am still here again, not there. This is my room where, over winter break, days after the end of the world, I sat just a few miles from here and watched Batman Begins and The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. And then I stared at the wall for two days and I thought, you know what? Being here is shit. I've been here way too long, and I really don't know what here is, if it's a person or a place or a feeling or a time or a series of events that seem to compose who I think I am, but I've also made it impossible to escape here so that I could try not being anywhere, so that I could trade in I'm still here for I'm finally somewhere. This is not something I've resolved. I am here, and some days it's suffocating, and other days it's not. But the better I get at owning it, you know, the less it seems like here has to be the only answer to a question. Instead, it's part of an answer, a longer answer that needn't be so all-defining. It's a month later, and I'm still here. It's a year later and I'm still here, it's two years, five years, it's 11 years, four months, and 20 days later. And before that, too, it's outside of these ideas about when and where. It's a promise and a pact, because fuck you, I'm still here. Keith McCleary. <laughs>